The movie commences within the confines of a dimly lit laboratory, where an individual lies dormant in a cryogenic chamber. As our gaze falls upon the monitor powering the apparatus, a startling revelation unfolds the man has slumbered for over 17 years. Suddenly an alarm disrupts the room's tranquility prompting the cryogenic chamber to creak open. The man who had been in an extended slumber spanning nearly two decades awakens, slowly surveying his surroundings which bear the resemblance of a subterranean bunker. Shortly thereafter our unnamed protagonist dons his oxygen mask embarking on a quest for sustenance and vital supplies. Unexpectedly the monitor issues a dire warning about the mounting pressure within the bunker signifying the need for an imminent evacuation. In the subsequent scene the man dons an ultra-protective suit arms himself and ventures out into the desolate world beyond. To ensure his safety he wears a helmet that facilitates breathing climbing out of the bunker with caution. The sight that unfolds before him sends shivers down his spine, a world once teeming with life and verdant landscapes now lies in ruins, decimated by a nuclear cataclysm. Every aspect of the surroundings from buildings to monuments and even the wildlife, has succumbed to devastation. Not a vestige of life remains exacerbated by the relentless downpour of rain contaminated with radioactive elements capable of instant fatality. Amid this grim and desolate panorama the man laments his decision to emerge from the cryogenic chamber but still clings to the hope of discovering signs of life. As he traverses the desolation he receives a message on his monitor, instructing him to head towards a rendezvous point situated 10 kilometers away. In this desolate wasteland the journey promises to be arduous, yet the man deems it a risk worth taking to escape the desolation and solitude of this dilapidated eerie world. And root remnants of newspapers bearing headlines of war, litter the path attesting to the world's dire condition brought about by a nuclear conflict. The man encounters abandoned cars their colors faded due to prolonged radiation exposure, rendering the entire landscape akin to a monochromatic film. Despite the prevailing melancholy and silence the man marches onward with unwavering hope clutching his firearm. Subsequently he arrives at a ruined edifice resembling a former government office. Anxious to uncover something of utility his search yields naught but a disconnected telephone and the derelict state of the place suggests that its inhabitants departed or perished long ago. The man exits the building and continues his odyssey, though now without the guidance of his monitor which displays no signal. At this juncture he no longer harbors concerns about survival but seeks the companionship of another human being. Having spent 17 long years in the cryogenic chamber the toll on his psyche becomes evident. As he trudges onward his monitor beeps signaling safety and breathable air. This revelation fills the man with an overwhelming sense of joy, prompting him to discard his helmet and savor the feel of rain a sensation he has long been deprived of. With meager food and a scant water supply, his journey to the rendezvous point seems fraught with uncertainty. In a twist of fate the monitor beeps once more indicating the presence of a fellow team member in close proximity just 205 meters away. Overjoyed the man hastily gathers his belongings and rushes towards this newfound hope yearning for companionship. Regrettably upon reaching the designated location all that remains is a damaged helmet, a testament to its owner's long-forgotten demise. Nearby radio continues to transmit signals that had once given the man hope, Overwhelmed with grief he takes the fallen helmet to a resting place and offers a heartfelt prayer a final act of humanity in these bleak and devastating times. The man rises to continue his journey wandering deeper into the ruined city. Some hours later he stumbles upon a decimated residence. Inside he discovers photographs of a family his own family revealing that the house belonged to none other than himself. In the pictures he sees his loving wife and their dog though it's been years since their passing. Overwhelmed by despair the man weeps then proceeds through the desolate city. The camera pans out to reveal an aerial view of the city, resembling an apocalyptic wasteland devoid of color consumed by radiation. Wall posters allude to war and destruction, drawing a scornful look from the man. As he consumes dog food possibly his last meal he attempts to maintain some semblance of normalcy by shaving his beard with a shard of broken glass. In the midst of this grooming his monitor the source of his directions abruptly powers down due to a depleted battery extinguishing his last hope. 
crushed the man weeps as if he has lost a beloved child. In the ensuing scene the man ascends the tallest building in the city, embarking on his final gambit. Devoid of any guidance through the desolation he resorts to signaling for help through the skies. With a flare gun in hand he fires it into the air hopeful that someone will spot it and respond. For several agonizing minutes nothing occurs and the man contemplates leaving. Yet in a moment of revelation another flare bursts to life indicating the presence of another wanderer in the ravaged city. Excitedly the man rushes in the direction of the signal and the rain has ceased. He spots a helmet atop a car but remains cautious observing the surroundings through binoculars. Suddenly from an unexpected quarter a gunshot rings out. As he whirls around he finds a woman clad in a protective suit similar to his own poised to fire upon him. A tense standoff ensues unspoken words hanging heavy in the air. Eventually they lower their weapons realizing that they may be the last survivors in this desolate world. The movie concludes as the two survivors gaze at each other sharing an unspoken understanding. With hope they contemplate the possibility of starting anew in a world forever changed.